Hey everybody, I'm Sean and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell and stay tuned. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for hanging in here with me. Today, I'm gonna try to make this video quick, but I am gonna show you how I use the nine by three Mighty Hoop sleeve hoop to do embroidery on the sleeve of sweatshirts or sweaters using my Tajima Sai eight needle embroidery machine. Stay tuned. Alrighty, so with this project, we're gonna be embroidering on the side of the sleeve. And this is a long sleeve sweater. I've already pressed a crease in it so that the crease is exactly opposite or as exact as possible of the seam that puts the shirt together. So there's my little mini iron. Um, I'm going to be using some no-show mesh and I'm going to be using the 9x3 Mighty Hoop. I always say 3x9 when people ask me about it but it is actually 9x3 and this is the one that It'll go in the machine long ways instead of sideways. So I get vertical and horizontal mixed up when I'm not thinking about it. But anyways, this is what I'm going to use. And I'm also going to use the backing holder so that we hold the stabilizer in place so that the stabilizer doesn't fall out while we're putting it in. You'll see what I'm going to do in a minute. So let me first separate this. And when we put this onto the machine we want to put it on so that the flatter part goes into the machine towards the machine and this sticks out towards you because this part sometimes it's just a little too long to actually go on the machine and you don't want it to bump so i'm going to put my no show mesh stabilizer on top and then i am going to use the hoop holder, I mean the backing holder on top of this. And that's just going to hold it in place while I put this, put it inside the sleeve. Once it's actually hooped, you do want to take that backing holder off. You don't want to leave it on there. Um, you just don't want to leave it on there. <laughs> so I'm going to go in through the collar or through the neckline with this part going in first because it's the shorter end as far as the pieces that stick out. If I can find the sleeve, the armhole, there we go. So now I have the crease that is helping me find exactly where I want the center point of the design to be. And I want to just try to make sure that the crease is about in the middle of that hoop. And as straight as possible. Now, if you want to stretch out the cuffs or if you have a bigger shirt and it's not going to stretch it out too terrible, you can always go down lower. But I'm just going to stop right about here as far as how much I'm willing to stretch this out. Trying to keep it as straight as possible. Now I'm going to get some water soluble stabilizer to put over it. And that is just because of the material that this sweatshirt is or sweater is because it's truly not that jersey type of sweatshirt material. I don't want the stitches to sink down in there. Okay. So I'm going to use some water soluble and I'm going to put that back in the bag. I'm going to just drape this over it. Now I'm going to just hoop it, okay? You know this is a strong magnet, and it catches it. And so now I can see it's, I think, it's great say I can see the crease. I can't see the crease. I'm hoping that it's, it's hoop straight. I hope that it is in the center. We're going to find out. So now we're going to go over to the hoop, get the design pulled up and start stitching. Alrighty, so now we are at the machine. This is the Tajima Sai 8 needle that is supplied by Juki. And what I'll do first is I'm going to hit this little flower so that I can pull my design up. 
Right now, my design is located on the USB. So I'm going to select USB. And I know that it's at the very end because it is the last design that I put onto this USB. I'm going to select that design and I'm going to hit set so that I can bring it up. Okay, to, to delete fine stitches, yes ma'am. Now, the colors are the colors that I want to stitch out or at least they are the needles for the colors that I want to stitch out. And so I'm gonna just hit set. The tubular one is the size hoop that I'm gonna use. Tubular one normally is truly just the biggest one, the eight by 12 hoop that comes with the machine. But because there is no way to set the Mighty Hoops into this particular machine that I found anyways, correct me if I'm wrong, if there is a way to put it in, let me know. But um, I just keep it at tubular one and I always trace my design so that I know that it actually fits. So I'm gonna select set. Now, this is where it's gonna show the orientation as to where your design is gonna uh, be traced from. So I want my design to be traced from the bottom of the design because once it is actually on the machine, it's going to be stitching from the bottom. Okay. So right now it looks like it's from the top because I haven't rotated it. So I'm going to select this little rose or whatever the flower here that flips the design. And so now the design is in the orientation to stitch the way I need it to stitch. So I'm going to get ready to put this onto the machine. And down here, this is the bar for the cap driver. I cannot do a video right now using the cap driver because I have not figured out how to correctly or not even perfectly, but I haven't gotten to where I do caps very well. So I'm not even going to entertain you all with that. <laughs> but we want to make sure when we put the hoop on here and get the sleeve on here, we want to make sure the sleeve goes around the bobbin casing, um, this arm right here that has the bobbin in it. We want to make sure that the sleeve goes around that, but over this, you don't want it to be stretched out under there. So I am going to put the frame on here and I'm going to slide it forward to get it clamped in. Sometimes the sleeve catches a little bit down here and you just want to make sure you are actually bringing it over the right pieces under here. Now, if you don't have the cap driver bar on there, that's fine. You won't have to worry about that. Okay, so now it is on there. Table would have been great here. I should have brought my stool over to sit the rest of the sweater on, but it'll be okay. <laughs> so now I have it on here. And what I'll do next is we're gonna get ready to trace. Let me try to turn the light off so that maybe you'll be able to see the screen a little better. Now, right here, there's that red crosshairs where the laser shows where the needle is going to go down. So I'm going to hit on the screen. I'm going to hit set because that is about where I want. The, the stitching to be at as far as the bottom. And then I'm going to hit set again. Tracing is executed. Yes, I want it to trace. And I just want to show you all that it will trace the area that it's going to be stitching. And if you are using um, a different type of hoop and you're, you have to trace, make sure that you don't try to stitch that design if the red crosshairs go into the frame area because that means your needle is going to try to go into that frame area and you're going to mess you're going to do some damage or possibly do some damage to your machine you don't want to mess your machine up okay so i'm going to hit yes and tracing is going to start Okay, so it says driver irregular signal detected. So what that means is for this machine, ah, okay, 
there's too much gathering up under there. And do you remember when I said that you want to make sure that you want to make sure that the sleeve is around that one part? So the sleeve isn't around it. The sleeve went up under here instead of under here. So give me a second so I can correct this and I need to get it to where the sleeve is actually around here. I'll be right back. Okay, so hopefully this works this time. I did get the sleeve over the arm there, but it's still above the cylinder for the cap driver, okay? So that is what I mean by that. Now this sleeve is a little more narrow and it might be a little tough tracing, so we're going to find out, okay? So we're going to come back over here. Um, I forgot to tell you, what I ended up having to do was I had to reset the machine because when it gives me that error, there's nothing that I can do that has worked so far other than turn the machine off, take the hoop off of the machine, restart, get the design back to the position where you need it. So I've got to get this back where I need it. And that is about it right there. And now I'm going to hit set because I think that's where I want it to be. And we'll see if it'll trace. It's going to be tight. but it's gonna work, okay? So I'm gonna put the phone back up on the tripod and I will start stitching. So before I hit stitch, just in case you want to know, the design itself is something that I created from some sil uh, silhouette images and I sent the silhouette file over to and brilliance using Stitch Artist 3 and then I digitized it in Stitch Artist 3. I am practicing digitizing. I just haven't gotten to where I'm good, good. So a lot of items, a lot of designs I do send out to someone else to digitize because a lot of logos and things that are really intricate, I am not that good. But the design size that is being used here, it is width wise as far as going from here to here it is two and one eighth inches going across and the height is three and thirteen sixteenths of an inch going up and down as far as how tall it is now this is a nine inch hoop as far as the length so obviously the tajima side the max stitch build um hoop is 8 by 12 which is 8 going this way 12 going this way so if you decide to use this hoop this uh mighty hoop here do not try to stitch the whole nine inch whole nine inches because it's not going to work if your design is more than what your stitch field allows according to your machine it's not going to work and i always recommend trace your designs to make sure you're not going to mess anything up. You don't want to tear any pieces of your um, embroidery machine up trying to get a, get a design to work. So always trace it if you can, okay? That's my spiel for now. I'm going to get to stitching. And of course, I won't go through and record the whole process of it stitching because it's literally just stitching. So I will hit pause for now and I will check back in with you all okay she's still stitching pretty well haven't had any issues so far sorry about all the shaking
Alrighty, so we are done stitching this one. I'm gonna just slide it off of here. And this is how it looks. So I'm gonna take it back to the table, get it unhooped, and we'll wrap this up. Okay, so we will take this off the machine. And y'all, you know what I forgot to do? Y'all know what I forgot to do, right? I forgot to take the backing holder off. I did. I forgot to take it off. I'm so glad that I didn't have any mishaps that caused it to break. And this is something I try really hard not to do. Mm -mm -mm. So now I'm going to slide this out. Uh-uh. Oh, that got caught up in there. So that's not a biggie. I'm just going to get my scissor. scissors. If I could keep my scissors away from that magnet. I'm telling you, it's a strong magnet. And I'm going to clip that away. Now, I'll just put those back together. And I don't know what I did with my little scissors. But I'm just going to go ahead and trim this away just so that it's there's not so much up under there and I'll clean it up a little bit better later. And to avoid that stabilizer overlapping, you can always just trim it, you know, once you have it on the hoop so that you don't even have to worry about extra stabilizer getting overlapped and stitched to itself. And I'll just go through and clip away as much of this doubled up stabilizer as I possibly can without cutting into the sweater itself and without cutting into the stitches because that would defeat the point in all it is. Okay. Now that is not dandruff on the, on the sweater. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but... I'm going to take this here off and now, you know, just um, spritzing the sleeve a little bit. We'll get rid of all of that extra stabilizer that are, you know, just the little tiny pieces in between the letters and everything. Just a little bit of water or something, well, not or something, a little bit of water. That's what you want to use. <laughs> a damp towel or rag will do it or you can spritz it. But um. I think it came out okay. Now, this here sweater, I did this the other arm in another video using the single needle flat bed. Do y'all remember this? If I'll try to link it somewhere in here. But um, this is the other sleeve. So if you just looked at them side by side, it does not look like I stretched this sleeve out terribly, putting it onto that hoop. And then keep in mind, I digitized these letters myself and they didn't come out all that great, but I'm the one that's gonna be wearing this, this one, okay? This is my personal sweater. So I've been wanting to do the other sleeve and I still need to do the middle part, goodness gracious. But anyways, this was done with the Mighty Hoop. This was done on the flat bed with the single needle. And um, I'll get this side cleaned up and we'll do one final look, okay? Alrighty, so it is all cleaned up. Got all the stabilizer off, that water-soluble stabilizer. Now, I will be honest, I'm not pleased with the way it's stitched out because for one, it's crooked to me on the bottom. And because I've been practicing digitizing using um, Embrilliant Stitch Artist 3, I realized I used a satin column for the word love and the word peace. However, I used a fill stitch for the word abundance. And I don't know why I did that, 
but it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. Plus, it's a little crooked, but it's okay because this is my sweater. And I just really wanted to show you all how I use the Mighty Hoop 9 by 3 inch sleeve hoop hoop to uh, stitch on the sleeves of sweaters or sweatshirts. Um, it's really not that difficult. It does take some making sure everything is lined up right and making sure your design size is correct. Uh, like I said earlier, this particular design, the width going across is two by one eighth of an inch wide. And then the height of it is three by three sixteenths of an inch high. So it's just under four inches high and just over two inches wide. But it does have a nice look, you know, as far as the sizing and the impact that you can have with this. And um, I'm still going to wear it because it's mine. <laughs> so that is all I have for you for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will try to put as much information in the description box as possible. And until next time, please keep taking care of yourselves.